Elliot, you did it again. You brought another beautiful woman in studio. I can't concentrate. You're all, I got you're this all ma- choked up. About I'm all it. choked up. I'm looking at this magazine cover here with this look in Canada here. I know California they wear sweatshirts <laughs> with shorts. In Canada they wear leather jackets half zipped with uh, panties. Yeah, well, first they've gone out and killed the animal, then they've skinned it. Oh, no. Isn't that how that works? That's no. so sad. Should we show the magazine here? Maxim Canada with the lovely April Rose it's on not, it. Yeah, it's not a full leather jacket. It's kind of a half. It might fit you nicely, Elliot. I don't I, know. I, I don't know. We'll have to try it on later. <laughs> One hour, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Anyway, we have the lovely April Rose in studio, as Yay. opposed to earlier this year when you were snowed out. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. And I got stuck in my driveway, and David was the only one in the studio that mm-hmm. day. Yeah, she had to come to your house and shovel, I heard. <laughs> I w- I'm still waiting. No. <laughs> he puts us to work. we got a big show today. Besides April, we're going to have baseball player, former baseball player Dale Murphy and Mike McCormick. But <clears throat> let's go right to the beautiful woman. Why not? How are you? I'm good. I'm just glad there's no snow outside. <laughs> well, it is July, so we're pretty safe by July. Yeah. A lot of high winds the last week. <laughs> Definitely. Branches down in your... Oh, my power went out, and uh, I was saying I didn't have air conditioning on, and I have a huge bull mastiff. It's about 130 pounds, and I couldn't leave him at home because it's just you know way too hot, so I brought him with me everywhere to meetings and a shoot and just running in stores, grabbing stuff and running errands, and, and uh, yeah, so he, uh, so, so he enjoyed the, that day. So the 2008 hometown hottie was indeed hot, hot, hot. <laughs> In more it, ways than one. It was really hot. Yeah, I mean, I mean the whole neighborhood was shut down for I don't know. How did half you get day. a hundred and thirty pound dog in the stores? Would you say it's your seeing eye dog? <laughs> well, I didn't bring him into like oh. stores, but like if I were to come into here, he would have came with me, and uh, hopefully you guys would deal with it. <laughs> we we would have talked to him. He could have pulled up a chair. Yeah, given him a microphone. Yeah. I thought you brought him Victoria's Secrets trying on underwear and shirts. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I don't want to even envision that. That could be interesting. But speaking of underwear. Well, <laughs> Good segue. You like that? <laughs> as in lingerie, as in lingerie football league, mm-hmm. you are not a member of the Chicago Bliss, but you did recently shoot a promo for the lingerie football league that's coming out, hopefully, July 22nd. Yeah, it'll be their commercial and a promo online. Um and they had me be the team captain slash quarterback and give kind of the huddle speech. And uh, it was a long monologue. It was of, like 45 seconds. Yeah. Monologue. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, we shot it at Toyota Park, and it was absolutely freezing cold outside. It was only about 45 degrees. It was freezing. And the, and but the wind. wind. Okay. But you have the wind, and then you have the wet mud that they had to like paint on us. So you're you're kind of wet and you're standing outside and it's freezing cold and it just hopefully it'll look better than it felt. <laughs> now you know what the Baywatch girls went through all those years. <laughs> it's a hard life. Yeah, I, I got there a little late for the shooting and there April was in her down full length <laughs> jacket shivering yeah, which is a little different than what you'll see in the commercial. Right. In the commercial <laughs> it, it'll look nice and like it's the middle of summer. Right. Yeah, it really will. They'll they'll do a lot with editing and hopefully make me look like a normal person because I was absolutely just shaking. My teeth were, my jaw hurt from being clenched so tightly for so long doing that. Did Nadia tackle you, Nadia Larissa? They were all like, who is this girl coming in here and everything? But Biatch. After, yeah. <laughs> But afterwards, they were all awesome and great, and yeah. we all made friends. Because you did shoot with members of the Chicago Bliss, even though they were dressed in Los Angeles They Temptations. were in the Los Angeles Temptations, um, which they had won the past championship right. games. So they wanted to do a highlight kind of commercial about that. So the girls weren't too happy about that, actually. But And then I came in, but we all made friends after and, you know, obviously had a big, cute lingerie pillow fight and all that fun stuff after. And so it was all the girly, you know, girly, all stuff. of course, <laughs> or, or girl on girl stuff. Do girls do pillow fights like that? Like the models that shoots <laughs> every time it's mandatory. <laughs> it's part of the contract. Right, right, right. right. You guys do the same thing after yeah. you guys are done with the show. <laughs> exactly. So who's the best pillow fighter among the models? Oh, my gosh. I, those those lingerie girls are they're tough because they really play the game and they really hit in the game and they know the game and it's there's our those are the girls that you want to get to know man those are those are some hot chicks <laughs> definitely even on a 45 degree night with the wind chill probably i can't very low. tell you how cold it was with that wind hustling just 
straight, your hair, winds blowing through your hair. It was wildly cold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in addition to all this, you are a Chicago White Sox fan. Si, senor. <laughs> and you're... Mid-season assessment of the underachieving White Sox. Why do you have to say it like that? <laughs> no mas. Why do you have to say it like that? Okay, okay. you're impartial. Uh, any way you want to. There's to, still hope. We'll keep hope alive. There's to keep hope alive. Um, you sound like Matt Garza. We're right where we want to be. <laughs> we're we're uh, doing better than the Cubs. Is that? Can I say that? <laughs> you can say that. I don't know that that's saying a lot, but you can say that. Yeah, I, you know what? I I only went out to one game this year, and it was again a freezing I'm, cold game. You, you ha but you had on a I, piece of clothing that I'd never seen before. That's true. Could you explain what that was? I had a battery powered heated jacket, and it stays hot for about four hours, and you can turn the temperature up and down. But that saved my life at that game. So while everybody around you was freezing their posterior, <laughs> there's April just sitting there like, okay, it's the middle of July. I'm comfortable. <laughs> Did it give you a suntan? <laughs> oh, gosh, no. But it was, a, you know, it was a... Where do you get something like that? I ordered it online. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember where. But they have a bunch of different ones online. Um, but that I think that'd be perfect for like a Bears game, you know, when it's, if, it's... if there is a Bears game, you know. <laughs> So how did you get to be on the initial cover of Maxim Canada? Um, they just called and asked. I've been working with Maxim America for a while since I won their hometown hotties thing in 2008. And uh, I had a relationship with Maxim Canada, and they wanted to launch uh, you know, a, a paper magazine, and they asked me to be on the cover. And my first thing I said on the phone to them was, no way. And later they told me, they're like, oh, my gosh, we were nervous that you were saying no. But I was just so excited. And I just said, you know, no way. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so they just wanted to kind of have someone kind of close to home, I guess. Not home in Canada, but home to the product. A familiar face. A familiar face. Or body parts or, or whatever. Or body parts. Yeah, Dale, <laughs> Dallas Green is also, his name's on the cover. I thought it was a former Cubs GM, but I guess he's a Canadian yeah, singer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of Canadian culture. It's obviously tailored, you know, for hockey. <laughs> so, and you went to Canada and for some UFC mixed martial arts fun? I went fun? to uh, Toronto to shoot this. And then, um, gosh, where did I go? Vancouver uh, for a UFC event and somewhere else for you. I'm flying Rochelle all Leah over the was, place. Rochelle was alongside Rochelle you. Leah was there and she interviewed me and she is wild like we were at an event at night and she's just going crazy and you know she interviewed me and she was great and then all of a sudden she just snapped and was a ball of energy and fun and telling me you know all these hollywood stories and everything like that and, and anything, i couldn't keep anything up. juicy <laughs> anything up she's dating i forgot this one guy she's dating maybe it'll come to me but yeah she nothing nothing crazy nothing that i can talk about on radio <laughs> have you ever met elliot's idol uh, hugh hefner no i haven't met hugh hefner and that, i would that, like to you and me both mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have to go out to uh, yeah to los angeles and sneak into right. the mansion i've never crossed over to playboy it's, it's kind of like you do maxim and you can then you can do playboy but you can't really do playboy and go back to maxim you know generally a lot of that's how it kind of goes okay. And uh, so I have a good relationship with Maxim, so I don't want to piss them off. Slash, I don't want to have my dad see anything if I were to do Playboy that I, I couldn't live with myself then. But, uh, but so, I'd still love to meet Hugh Hefner. So you wouldn't do Playboy if he asked you? You know, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm I'm 28 now. Oh, you're, and, t you're too old for him. And, yeah, well, I, I probably am. But I'm 28 <laughs> now, and I'm still like uncomfortable that my dad would see something like that i'm like i feel like i'm old enough to where i shouldn't feel that uncomfortable well, but i tell him to stop looking at those I, magazines <laughs> right he's reading the articles oh, okay right? just like me <laughs> but i'd still feel just uh, i don't know i just feel like bad and wrong and I, I don't think i could do it would you want your daughter to do it elliot Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, see? I wouldn't. See? My do three you have daughters, a daughter? I have three. But, yeah, but... <laughs> Seven, six, and five. Yeah, you that's, a little, that's a little young, isn't <laughs> no, it? No, you know when they get no, older. Right, the right age. Absolutely yeah. not. Okay. See, I'd kill them. You know where, and I don't want to be murdered by my father. <laughs> or anybody. <laughs> yes, I couldn't. So you mentioned you have some TV work going or internet TV? Um, yeah, no, I was putting together um, kind of like a splash reel talk soup type of thing for Maxim, and we're working on some projects together. Um, and uh, I'll be going out to New Orleans 
um, launching um, Jim Beam's new product called Devil's Cut. Which is um, what? They haven't told us yet. That's all I know. <laughs> you just know the name. And it's surrounded in a New Orleans theme. Um, and the toxicologist is still trying to figure yes, it out whatever they call exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, they're that, just saying, here, yeah. try it. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll see that in the October <laughs> issue of American Maxim. Um, and just talking to the Speed Channel about um, hosting some shows on there. So that would be really neat to do. Okay. So you were um, an auto race fan. You know, I've been to NASCAR races. I've been to Top Fuel races out in Joliet. Um, I wouldn't, I couldn't name, you know, a, a ton of drivers and tell you their stats or anything about them. But they're definitely fun to go to. We had those couple girls on who were NASCAR drivers, the twins. Yeah, the Cope twins. The Cope twins. I want to call them the Bobsy twins, but. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you wouldn't want. Would you want to be a driver? I've been. I didn't drive, but I've been in a NASCAR in Daytona. They take you around the track as kind of a novelty or whatever. But I went around the track at 175 miles an hour, and you know the the road is up on an angle, yeah, like it, a real banked. steep angle. Yeah, yeah, it's banked, and you just really that centrifugal force just pushes you right in the seat, and your stomach, you know, your heart's dropping in your stomach, and it's it's a wild to be thinking that they're doing that for hours at a time. Don't you do that, Dan Ryan? <laughs> You know what? Uh, it reminds me, Ryan reminded me that when I was a teenager, I got so many speeding tickets when I was a teenager that, you know, out of high school, I worked, I wanted to work for an ambulance, but the ambulance <laughs> couldn't hire me because I had so many speeding tickets as a teenager that the insurance company wouldn't cover me to drive the ambulance. So I do have a little my lead, brother lead foot. My brother wanted to be an ambulance driver, but he's bad with directions. We always <laughs> laughed about it. I know. I need a GPS too. That could be tricky. So they didn't think driving 50 miles over the speed limit would be good for an ambulance driver? <laughs> no, I was a reckless teenager. What, what's the fastest you ever went? I found the governor on my car, is that we call it? That little chip right. at 125 in the middle of the panhandle of Texas. <laughs> There's nothing there anyway. So. Exactly. I, got I wanted you, to get through it. I got you topped. I did what? 130 really? going down to Arkansas in a four-cylinder Integra. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it. How do you do that? Downhill? <laughs> no, we were. I had the gas put all the way down. Uh -huh. We were in law school. We were going down to Hot Springs, Arkansas after first-year finals. And I had that thing up to 130, but the problem was you're getting wind gusts, and that oh, car started moving. Yeah. I said, I'm not going over 130. I didn't think the car could go that fast. Wow. I'm surprised it would stay with its tires on the road. I mm -hmm. figured it would just sort of fly Get away. airborne? Yeah. That could be dangerous. But now I'm an attorney. <laughs> I only go the speed limit. That's very smart of you. But fortunately, he has clients who do not. Yes. And that's what keeps partly in business. <laughs> the only thing fast I'm around are women. <laughs> Ooh. But I'm bump. Ooh. Fancy. So... Uh, are you bothered at all by the NFL lockout, the NBA lockout, or could you care less? Um, no, I, you know, talking about it, and hopefully they come to resolution. The Chicago Huddle, um, we're, you know, already working on getting sponsors and working on that show. Um, Dan Jiggett's hosted it last year, um, and I kind of co-hosted, interviewed the players on Comcast Sportsnet. So um, it wouldn't be much of a show if they didn't have games, would yeah, it? Yeah, it wouldn't be much of a show. <laughs> Do you have a big enough screen for Jiggett's? Oh, hey, my gosh. Hey, hey, be nice. <laughs> I, I mean, love Dan Jiggett. No, but I'm saying he's a big man. He makes the players look tiny. He does. He really does. You know, and he like, you know, Matt Forte's coming on. And, you know, Matt's a big guy, but he's not, you know, the bigger of. He's not Dan yeah, Jiggett right, size. Right, right. But Dan just makes him look tiny. And he makes all of them look tiny. Like, you want to put him on a booster chair, the players on a booster chair next to him, because, you know, Dan's a, a bigger guy, so... So who was the best guest you had on last year on the huddle? Um, gosh, I really like Des Clark. He's a great interview, um, great talking to. So he he could get on the program, he just couldn't get on the field last year. Yeah. The only problem with Des is he's following the line of former Bear tight ends. He's marketing all kinds of shit. Yes. Coffee. <laughs> Well, he's thinking about a future career, <laughs> right. you know, and I, I get it. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, nowadays, you have more and more players who, during their career, look like they're auditioning mm -hmm. to be behind a microphone or in front of a camera. Sure. Yeah, he's looking for something else to do, which I totally, I totally get that. That makes sense. Now, your career, how long do you envision being April Rose. You know what? I was just talking about that the other day because I'm like, if I'm 40, I can't don't can't see myself, you know, doing this type of stuff. So maybe you know, I'll be marketing coffee or. <laughs> you can have you a know. talk show on Q101. I'll have a talk show on Q101. I don't know. You never know where it goes. I have companies approach me about you know making apps and and different stuff like that. And so I definitely do a lot of behind the scenes um, editing and art directing, and I enjoy kind of the whole creative process. Okay. Well, because I was at this. Uh 
convention over the weekend in the Stevens uh, Convention Center in Rosemont, Exotica, Chicago. What is that? It was adult entertainment. Oh, okay. and, and there were women there <laughs> who were approaching 50. Oh, sh- okay. So you're saying I have a chance still. Yeah, there, there's, there's, <laughs> long, there's longevity in other venues. You yeah. know what? I walked in a restaurant <laughs> back in the mid-90s, and this woman was the hostess. And I go, who is this? And all the guys were, don't you know, Seika or Sega? Yeah, go, the- yeah. She, I don't know. She, she was big in Chicago, you know, 30 years ago or so. She's got to be 100. No, 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 no. She's in her 50s. She lives <laughs> no, in, come on. She lives in Kansas City every once in a while. Who she was got, she? She was a, an adult actress. Oh, an adult actress. Way back in the, in the 70s and mm-hmm. early 80s. Mm-hmm. Aren't you fascinated I have this knowledge? <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> this is what you know, I've had to do research in my career in this somehow. It's part because, of your job. You got it. It's... And, and oh, uh, in the mid nineties on, on the, the loop, loop, she hosted an overnight talk show. We were informed by Dave Olson, our producer, and I'm sure he just knows that because what do, what does she have to talk about? I would assume sex. <laughs> uh, overnight, would you listen what is to it like? Song? What is like the B ninety six when they had Karen Hand back in the day with Eddie and Jobo here? Probably better than that. Who would you rather listen to overnight? Les Grobstein on sports, mm-hmm. Sika on sex. Yep. Can, I, can I think that one over for like a nanosecond? I agree. You I know. agree. Mm-hmm. Who's listening at, you know, at two in the morning? There's very few people, some truckers. But that's, <laughs> that's, why, that's why we stopped the show on IND at right. midnight. Demented people like me are up at that hour. So if you're not watching something mm-hmm. on television or on your computer, you might listen to something. I could similar. see how that could be interesting. Yeah. We got a hat for you, April, because I the know. last time I gave you a hat on the old show, there was the most popular picture on my Facebook go. page when you had the barely legal hat on. Because I wasn't wearing anything else. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Look How's at it that. Look? It, it looks... doesn't fit over the headphones. We'll have to take a picture afterward <laughs> and put it up and tweet it and Twitter it and Facebook it. Social and, network. And, and all Social that network. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Put it on Elliot's page. <laughs> and your web page is April Rose Online. Yeah, that's AprilRoseOnline.com. It's not you, that exciting. You've got a Facebook page too, right? <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, lots of fun stuff. She's, she's everywhere. I'm trying. Maxim asked me to start Twittering. Is that the right? Tweeting? Tweeting. Tweeting. There you go. <laughs> you, you could be their tweet heart. <laughs> yeah, they asked me to start doing that. And, and so I'm, I'll go into spurts where like one day I'll be on it like all day. And then the next day I forget about it. And <laughs> I don't know the rules that well yet. About I don't, I don't think there are rules. You know what I miss? Seeing you on the sides of buses a couple of years ago. <laughs> Do you miss seeing yeah. yourself on the sides of buses? Too? Uh, that was and interesting. Bill that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, that was interesting. That's all you could say about. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, Look you, at me on a bus. You, well, you were the Loop Rock girl, also. I was a Loop Rock girl. Now this year's Loop Rock girl. I haven't met her, um, but she used to play in the Lingerie Football League. Right, Trisha. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about her, but she's tall. I've heard that she's tall. What so. is what is a goal for you? Say five years from now, what would be your dream job? Um, to have my own show on TalkZone.com. No, <laughs> With David and I running uh, exactly. a- a- errands for you, yes. bringing your coffee. And- you don't want to work with Jiggets? Do a show with Jiggets? I would, no, I love that. We're doing the huddle you know, again this year. Hopefully. I'm sure we will. Um, but, yeah, no, that, to expand on that. and You, you know. could be Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I don't no. Think he, I don't think Dan would appreciate oh, that. Oh, no. That's if April did a show with you and me, then no. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Dan is really a sweet guy, though, and, and he talks to everyone. And, you know, he's not like some of the sports guys where you're kind of too cool to no, say no. hi to everyone. He'll really ask you about your day. Every single fan and person that comes to the show. Right, he's a genuine individual, yeah. smart guy. Yeah. What do you think about Jay Cutler with Cavalieri? I don't, I'm so not into that L.A. scene. They're in Chicago, aren't they? Yeah, but, you know, she's all into that L.A. scene, and that's just so. Have you ever met her? No. And, and she's selling this or that online. Yeah, and, and that's fine. That's great and everything. I'm just not about that. L.A. and very kind of Chicago, I guess you could very say. Midwestern, Midwestern-y sen- girl. Sensibility. So yeah, I'm just... not, you know, people ask me all the time, are you going to move to L.A.? How do you not get trapped by all that stuff? Because you do a ton of stuff mm-hmm. that a lot of girls, it would just screw up their heads. Yeah, sure. No, I, I don't my every day you know i'm like look, look what i'm wearing right now i'm a t-shirt and jeans and i'm not that exciting i'm not you know 
I, all the well, Chanel we'll and all the Prada. We'll put that to a vote. I think you're going to lose that vote <laughs> two to one. But, but it's a different world in L.A., and I like, um, you know, and right now I live on the south side of Chicago, and, uh, you know, I'm going to the hole-in-the-wall bar on the corner of the street, you know, not the new nightclub downtown, and I'm kind of think there's two different worlds there. That, so you adapt a, a little bit different persona when it is yeah. an event. You know, that, I can play that game and, and go there, and, and it really depends who you're with and who you're hanging out with, you know. Not as much where you are. Okay, so if you were hanging out with David and me, yeah. you'd have this droopy, sad look on your face like, help, get me out of here. They'll think we hired an escort. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> you look, look at us. Uh, yeah. You what? guys are studs. Huh. You guys are complete studs. Okay, we want to make that a cut. And we're <laughs> going to save that. We can use that for promotional purposes. Dave said he's heard enough. <laughs> The last person you saw for with April Rose like this is in the federal pen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, April. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks great for seeing you again. On. It was great talking to you. Again, that was Maxim Hadi, Maxim Canada cover girl, April Rose.